Hi friends, it's Nirmal back again from Nandanam Exotics and today we'll be looking at six major factors that affect the growth and health of a carnivorous plant. This will be a general video discussing about some of their care needs. So let's take a look. So friends, today uh, the video will be an all-inclusive uh, major care tips that mostly generalize to most carnivorous plant. It won't be a specific care guide for Nepenthes or Venus flytrap likewise. So we'll take a look. So friends, we'll be discussing six major factors in this video. So try to watch the video completely. Uh, and by doing so it also helps out the channel grow as well uh, so do consider watching the video completely carnivorous plants or insectivorous plants are one of the most fascinating and unique group of plants that gardeners can have in their collection so in one of my videos in the past i discussed about six varieties of carnivorous plants you can easily find in the market to grow in your garden i'll leave a link to that in the notification bar so today we'll be discussing about six major factors that you should keep in mind while you grow a carnivorous plant. There are so many plants on earth that show carnivorous behaviors. So I cannot say that the above factors will apply to them all. So there might be exceptions. So first and foremost, we are going to discuss about light. Carnivorous plants on a general note require a lot of sun. There are only some plants that require shade. Most of them require full day sun. Uh, there are certain exceptions like Nepenthes do grow in shade as well. Like in a deep forest, they do grow in shader conditions. But if you give them full sun, the picture color and the health of the plant also is much more better than you grow it in shade. Plants like Venus flytrap, Saracenia, Butterworth, uh, Sundew, they all require a lot of sun and the more sun you can give your plant, the better and healthy they grow. So always select the best uh, sunniest spot in your garden to grow your carnivorous So just to give you an example, these sundews that you are seeing are all red and dewy just because of the light they receive, otherwise they would just be really green. Another major factor that determines the health of your plant is water. Always choose very clean and reliable source of water. Your best option for water will be reverse osmosis water that comes from an RO filter or you can collect rainwater during monsoon and use that to water your plants. Plants like Nepenthes or Asian pitcher plants show much more tolerance towards the quality of water but still try to give them the best quality of water you can provide. So you can select a water that usually goes under 100 parts per million TDS value. TDS value is what which tell you the amount of minerals dissolved in your water. So if the value is 100, below 100, then that is a safe source of water. So friends, when you grow carnivorous plants, generally the, grow, the seller or the source from which you got the plant will advise you to keep your plant in a tray filled with water. This is actually required because they need boggy situations to grow. So to recreate the bog or swampy situations that they are used to in nature, keep them in a tray of water like this. So generally, I would tell you or suggest you to not grow your Nepenthes, which are Asian pitcher plants, to uh, be kept in a tray of water. But any other carnivorous plant that you obtain should be kept in a tray of water of at least one inch depth. The water should be at least one inch. Even though these plants sit in a tray of water and have a very moist medium, it's always advisable to water it from the top occasionally to wash out extra mineral buildup. While we are on the topic of watering, some pitcher plants require us to fill the pitchers with water, which is naturally done by rain in nature. The third major factor that we are going to discuss about is humidity. Humidity is very important for carnivorous plants since they are from very wet areas of the world. The overall humidity around the plant is always very high. So to increase the humidity around your plant, you can grow them inside glass domes, you can keep them inside terrariums, you can even give a glass dome on top of the plant to increase the humidity. But be sure to not expose such plants to hot sun. 
A prime example for requiring humidity is sun dews. The more humid the climate is, the more dew they produce. Giving humidifiers and misting systems can also help with increasing humidity. This really increases the size of pitchers and the overall health of the plant. On the other hand, some temperate species like Saracenia, Venus flytrap, etc. do not require high levels of humidity. They can survive even if it is below 50%. Friends, as always, I'm reminding you guys to consider subscribing to the channel and being a part of the family. Also, press the bell notification button and select the all option so that all my new videos will be notified whenever I post them. The fourth major point I'm bringing to you guys is medium or soil. Uh, when you grow a carnivorous plant, you cannot grow them in normal garden soil, compost or anything that will give them any sort of nutrients or minerals. So always choose something that is very inert and that will only soak up water and provide the plant with water. Do not give them any medium that has any mineral content. I'll give you some examples of what we use for carnivorous plants. So some of the common things I use are laterate stone, long fibered sphagnum moss, perlite or pumice stone for increasing air circulation in the medium, washed gravel or silica sand which is very important for some of the species and finally we use any sort of peat to wick up the water. So generally sphagnum moss, long fibered sphagnum moss, peat moss, cocoa peat, uh, perlite, uh, these are all the things that we generally use to make up mediums for your carnivorous plant. It, differ it is different for different species and genus. As I mentioned earlier, this is not applied to all sorts of carnivorous plants. Butterworth, for example, require entirely different medium. The fifth factor that we are going to talk about is containers. Always choose inert containers like plastic, glazed, ceramic, etc. to grow your carnivorous plant. They do not like something like earthen pots that would leach a lot of mineral. The pot should also have sufficient drainage and should facilitate good airflow as well. So the sixth and final factor we'll be discussing about is dormancy. Some of your plants are from temperate parts of the world and are not top, totally tropical in nature. This rule mostly applies to temperate plants which are generally from colder parts of the world. So such plants would require a short period of rest every year like Venus flytrap, pingviculas, etc. They do require a short period of rest during the year which is induced generally by winter and the cold climate. So if you are a grower that is from a tropical part of the world, you might have to go through the tedious task of putting your plants to sleep like Venus flytrap and those temperate species like Saracenias etc. So the dormancy is expected to last for at least two months, generally from Halloween to Valentine's Day. In future videos, I'll show you how I put my plants to sleep using a refrigerator or other means to uh, somehow trick them into thinking that it is a strong enough winter to take a hibernation or dormancy. On the other hand, tropical carnivorous plants like Nepenthes are not expecting a winter dormancy. You are supposed to actually protect them from colder climates. Skipping dormancy for more than 2-3 years in the tropical climate can seriously affect the plant's health and you will start noticing that your plant is slowly degrading. So I would strongly suggest you try giving them dormancy. So for tropical gardeners, the best option to have an insectivorous plant is a lowland nepenthes. Guys, I have an Instagram page called Nandanam underscore exotics where I do updates of whatever video I do here. So if you have more queries also, you can contact me there in the Instagram. The link is down in the description below. So friends, the next time you think of growing a carnivorous plant, keep in mind all these factors. So friends, I hope you guys enjoyed today's carnivorous plant video. It was a general care guide for them. I'll be doing more specific uh, species or genus specific videos in the future. So stay tuned. Until next time, it's Nirmal signing off.